Um, and I've seen a number of pictures. There's been a lot of uh, Facebook traffic on people that are doing uh, duckhead bus. But uh, as far as uh, the overall carve, it's, it's made out of pine. And I, I basically make this concave um, before I put a dowel pin and then a base. Um, but as far as the carve goes, um, I then uh, spray it with a coat of deft spray deft and then uh, or a couple coats uh, of deft and then uh, then I, I take the gesso or gesso and uh, I just use just the, the raw gesso and I stipple it. So I just stipple it all along uh, as it's drying and it gives a, a, a pretty decent uh, three dimension on a, on a head like this. I also put some 3M blue tape uh, around the white dots um, just for uh, so I can peel it off when I'm finished here. Uh, typically, I just kind of go around that and then uh, paint later. The paints I use are oil base. However, the oil base uh, paints that I use um, are somewhat difficult in the sense that they're glossy at the end. And I don't like the glossy look too much. A, a, a slight gloss is fine. Um, but what I've, I've found out is if I use white and black, if I use the Rust-Oleum flat uh, versions of those, um, it tends to uh, dull out the overall finish. So with that, I've got a little pattern um, that I use. It's basically just outlining how I'm going to paint it and the, uh, the different percentages of the different colors that I use. And I put the, the base coat on um, with, the, with the colors as outlined. Um, so I'll, and then I also, I just use a light pencil just to kind of get the area so that it's, it's fairly even. So the first um, color that I'm using is black with a little green mixed in. So I do that and uh, I just uh, paint that around where I've got my, my pattern. It, uh, my paint did dry a little bit here, but I'll make it work. So I try to, uh, as I taught my daughters when they were young, stay in the lines, but uh, that doesn't always work. But, and that's fine too, by the way. Okay. And uh, try to go around here a little bit. <clears throat> I normally have music or a, uh, a ball game on, so anybody wants to tell me what the score of the Twins game is tonight. I don't know if they're. I don't know if they're playing yet. Yeah. They got their butts kicked the other day by KT. Yeah. What kind of music? Oh, I. It doesn't really matter. I. I, I actually like uh, <laughs> some '80s music. Is fine with me. Or uh, Cool 108 or uh, Jack FM. A couple of those, but. Trust me, it doesn't necessarily help. So now what I'm doing is now I'm going to paint the next layer in. This is green um, with a touch of black. And that will kind of go right around the edge here. So almost the exact opposite. Yeah, I go 75, 25, and then 25, 75. Exactly. Good question. How long does it take for that, that coat to dry? I uh, personally have a spot in my house that it dries in about uh, two days. And it's on top of the water heater, and there's a vent from the furnace that comes down. So I, it, uh, it's got a, it's, it's, it's called a, a Bebo kiln, I think. I, I don't know. But it does, yeah. 
Obviously, the more uh, tube paint that I use, the longer it takes. And it's interesting with tube paint how, um, how some of them dry relatively quick and some of them obviously not. More black here. And what are you dipping? Is that straight paint thinner? Turpentine or, or paint thinner. Either one works for me. Okay, a little bit more in here. <clears throat> want to get it pretty equal, obviously, to the best of my ability. I like to, to highlight a little bit of a black behind the eye um, and, a, and a tad in front also. Just kind of split the, uh, I have a kind of a V shape behind the eye here, um, uh, as far as just to having some contour to it, tends to make it look more realistic. So I'll go a little black here. Does have a little green in it, but as you'll see, I will be mixing that as well. Then what I want to do from a more of the highlighted version then, um, as far as the back of the head and the top of the brow, um, what I do is I mix a little yellow ochre um, in with white. Not a whole lot, I would call it probably a, uh, a 90-10 or 85-15, predominantly white. So then I put that in the center here. And then up on the brow as well. Doesn't look much like a duck at this point, obviously, but it'll get there. A little more white in the back. True value. <laughs> or Home Depot, I guess. Is this what you use for the base? These for the base? Uh, yeah, I mix them with the with the tube. Oh, you mix. Uh, with, that's okay, what that's yeah, what I'm yeah, doing yeah, here. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and and and. Yeah, the, the key, the, the, the base is gesso, good point. But with this, as far as uh, the color, and again, with it just really assists um, as, as far as uh, letting it dry faster too, and then giving it a dull finish. Sure, okay. Okay, so it looks like I missed a little bit of black. <clears throat> Touch that in. Okay, then I use a fan brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend the colors together. The dark black with the tad green with the green. And I go around and touch all of them to blend it in. And I will need here and there, once in a while, some more paint as it has been drying here. Okay, and then I'm blending the green in with the black to more or less highlight those areas. I 
I did outline the eyes in black, um, just so I don't get them too much tonight. Um, but it, it did kind of like an eyeliner, if you will. So now, as I blend this, they start to have the highlights in the in the duck head as needed. Stop for a second. Kind of show us what it looks like. Okay. Yeah. It's just the it's, it's just slowly stippling and blending. Now I'll start going into the white and yellow ochre. <clears throat> that a little bit darker. Oh, by the way, uh, for my bills, it's it's flat black, just the Rust-Oleum, and then I spray them with Deft after a day of drying. You don't want to spray it too early because it'll it'll have that little cracky type effect, which obviously we don't want. So now I'm moving the white around. You can see Blending that in now. And then I'll need a little bit more green. I've never shot a gold and I know that white patch is it is it greenish in or is it more white? It's 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 white and yellow and yellow ochre when I put it on just for the first outline. But now what I'm doing is I'm blending the green into it and because if as a as a golden eye you really don't see any white it's just lighter shades of green Taking some courses somewhere as a painter? No, I, I'm just. Self taught? I just, yeah, I do it on my own and make a lot of mistakes. You didn't major in college in architecture? No, I'm, I'm a nerdy engineer. <laughs> well, you are an engineer, I forgot about that. <laughs> you fooled around with them, you experimented them. You bet. And uh, now that uh, YouTube is out, there's the you know some of the professionals or the the world champions are phenomenal to watch and uh people like tom that are helping us out little tips here and there so that outline of my uh eyes before i start is something of a bit of a trick. I guess I call it the Alice Cooper type effect, um, but it does seem to uh, work pretty good. And then this groove right under the eye, I will also shade that a little dark too. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit more green in here. The key to me is really the blend uh, once you have it and uh, also to be able to um, tilt it a bunch of different angles. You'll see it's starting to take shape now. <clears throat> I 
Now that I've done that, then I, I take a, uh, a special brush. This is, uh, it's basically, um, I don't know what it's called, but it's round, but it has fine uh, uh, threads at the end of it. So it's, uh, it, 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 it really helps in the, the blend now. You really have to just use those fine tips. So really, I'm just touching it. Call it a tickle, but it's it's uh, that's essentially what I'm doing here. So you can start seeing how that's starting to take shape. So I'm just doing one side right now because of time, but you're getting an idea of how it will shape up. Well, stiff when you have head, you could use that on a ballot head or another side. This essentially is almost identical to a mallard. The one thing about the mallard is it's got a little bit more uh, yellow ochre that's mixed back here. So now I can move it a little bit here with those fine bristles just to blend it in a little bit more. It dry, yes. It already had the the paint on it. I, as you saw, mostly I uh, just. Uh, yep, just to uh, continue to blend and move it. Yeah, I'm just moving paint essentially. Although, there are some areas once in a while that I miss. It, very soft. Yeah. Good question. It's uh, just got fine bristles at the end, so that's why I don't want to use, I don't want to press too hard, but it'll just come together that way. I don't recall seeing a, brush, a bristle like that in white paint or any stores. Uh, this one um, is called uh, Princeton Brush. I think it's called, it's, it's a select brush, and you get it at uh, Michael's. That's where I got it. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure. It's, it's, it is a, uh, the blending portion of it. But you can see right there, that's... It's cut back so much on the stuff, it's almost not worth going So that's how you. Yeah, I, I I will you know blend a little bit more and keep working on it, but that's essentially um, the feel of it. I don't know if you have any other questions. This is good. Oil paints dry darker than acrylics. Good question. Um, it, it overnight it will dry darker it blends in together so the lighter patches out here will tend to be a little bit darker after a day or two but uh, that's a very good question because I always I always end up kind of making it a bit darker and then I look at them in the morning and it's like oh dang it all blended together and it, it doesn't look right acrylics are, are much better uh, with that they kind of typically hold their their color um you know overnight the reason i ask is every time i've tried to do oops oil it's always ends up being black the next day three days later thanks yeah do you blend into your pattern no. what's that do you blend into the pattern well, yeah, I mean, now what I will do for touch-up is I'll take a, a fine 
Actually, I could do that right now. Got a bit of time. I've got a fine print. And uh, you can just, uh, it's the, 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 the grain, if you will, is this direction. And then I can just uh, blend it a bit. The problem with the oil paint is that it's not dry. And what I do is kind of put a base on this and then just let it um, wait till it dries and then finish it off with, uh, with some of the uh, touch up here. This type of thing. And make it streaky somewhat. Even if the green does blend in a little bit, that's, that's actually, <laughs> it actually looks good. So it's not a distinct. However, in a golden eye, that white patch is very distinct. But it is soft around the edges. Just have to watch. What you can do is also then, after you do the white, is take the green and move that then back. Go back and forth and get a real soft uh, edge. You could do that now with the green. I could, when yeah. But the problem is, is the green overnight will then spread. It migrates like a capillary type action. These are all the things that you learn while you're doing it and making the mistakes. But then that gives it a nice little softer edge, as you can see. <clears throat> and you keep that white patch pretty stark white? Pretty much. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I it's mean. the gesso. Yeah, the gesso grooves, if you wanted to put grooves in that, you could do a, a slight little etch with a, with a, um, with a toothpick just to kind of get that in there. Um, and it's not perfectly combed. It's yeah, you can just, or you can use two or three coats of paint, yeah. uh, with this type paint it, you can just keep painting it on and it gives it that, that look. Mm -hmm. So overall that's, that's pretty much how, how it turns out. It's real ugly on this side. That's okay. You got the ice covered or? I, I do. That's also a good question. Um, but it's not going to come off very much. It's all wet. Okay. It'll come off a little. Can you paint your first oil? You do have to it dries. After it dries, um, what, you, what I can do uh, sometimes in the back to get more of a feathered look, I can mix a little bit more paint and go over it with that special brush or a very fine, long um, uh, horsehair brush. You can do it with that too, to give it a little bit more, yep, a little bit more flair on the back. And I've seen that by certain folks, especially at the world championship this year, there was, I uh, took a lot of pictures and and look close at a lot of some of the, the birds that people do. And it's pretty amazing to me on the different things that they do. But you can see the eyes are kind of coming out the golden eyes. Mm -hmm. But you, you wait for it to dry and then the toothpick just takes it off. And for me, because I put that black coat and also I had the gesso underneath there, a lot of times on working birds, you get that little white uh, I see on the canvas backs right there they have that little white if you will yeah and and uh if you dig your your toothpick in a little bit the white paint will come out mm -hmm. and if you do that before the oils dry it's perfect <laughs> <laughs> so you can still scrape it a little uh -huh. bit 